Hello, listeners. Jordan here. I just want to let you know that you can listen to Nighttime early and ad-free on Amazon Music. Include it with Prime. You are listening to Keep Canada Weird, a weekly weird news roundup by the Nighttime Podcast. Hello, listeners, and welcome back to the weekly Keep Canada Weird discussion series. If you're new here, Keep Canada Weird is the venue in which my pal, handsome Aaron Airport, and I seek out and explore the more offbeat Canadian news stories that caught our eye over the past week. In tonight's episode, which we recorded during the Great Easter Hangover of April 10th, 2023, Aaron and I inexplicably focus on dogs. We discuss an Easter egg hunt for dogs, a long-distance relationship between two dogs, a bad toy for dogs, and equally inexplicably, we talk about an actual licensed bar in a police station for that same police force that spent nearly a quarter million dollars making a podcast that no one listened to. So let's get into it. Handsome Aaron Airport. A happy Halloween. No, happy <laughs> Easter. <laughs> you wish oh, it was Halloween. We're off to an awful start. Oh, happy God. Easter, Cancel my friend. The show. No, this it's is just brutal. We just got to power through mistakes. Happy Easter, my friend. Happy Easter to you. What a nice holiday to celebrate the Lord's death and then <laughs> his zombification. Yeah, it's like when you get into the um, theological side of Easter, it's a weird one. But I'll tell you, I'm all for like yeah. a an, a celebration of chocolate and Kinder Surprise eggs, and I don't. The, I, I call it the Christmasification of Easter. There's a lot more. Like when I was a kid, oh, I never got wow, yeah. anything for for Easter other than chocolates and maybe a little something. But my kids, it's it was like Easter. It was like Christmas morning. Yeah, yeah. I I mean, I don't have kids, but at the same time, I see, uh, you know, things on social media and, and friends of mine who have kids talking about how crazy their Easter's are now. Like kids mm -hmm. get just as much toys as they get at Christmas time. Yeah. And it's I don't know. It's got to stop. Like, yeah, I, I was like you. I would get like, you know, I'd have my Easter basket with, you know, some chocolate in it and one small toy. Like a, uh, yeah, GI Joe figure, a book, yeah, an action or, figure, or something at the most. Maybe uh, some a bubbles. Nintendo, <laughs> Nintendo game, maybe. A Nintendo game that would be completely crazy for me if I got a Nintendo game at, at Easter. That's unheard of in my household. Okay, well, no. Regardless, uh, just to put the Easter holiday behind us, I had a great time. My kids had a great time. Sounds like you and your friends and family and loved ones all had great Easter's as well. No mm -hmm. one got hurt. I don't know. I don't have to heard. call the hospital and ask. <laughs> I haven't heard of anything. Um, I want to address something, though, because this is uncomfortable and it's kind of weird. So I think anyone who's watching the live stream of this recording on YouTube probably notices we're a little late starting, maybe five, ten minutes late. People who are listening to the podcast will be smooth and seamless and it'll work when they hit play, I assume. But the reason for being late is weird. So we came out... I don't know, three weeks ago, we showed our cards a bit and our listeners now know that there is a connection between this show and the federal government. It, that hasn't always been that case. That is something once the ball got rolling on the show, they stepped in and for the mm. most part took over. The, the deal has always been that Jordan, Aaron, keep Canada weird. That's your mandate. Find the stories, share the stories, celebrate the culture of canada with canadians and we were all for that never was there going to be any editorial oversight of the show by trudeau by the liberals by the canadian government the house of senate if that's even a thing i don't know politics well doesn't sound like a thing but sure <laughs> anyway um things got a little touchy there's a couple things i have to say and then going forward, we're going to revisit this whole relationship. But I just want anyone listening, I'm asked to remind everyone that the tax deadline is the end of this month, I believe. So if that's something you have to do, you have to start doing it now. I was also given the message that when in doubt, round up for anyone who does their own taxes. Um, the only other thing, we just need to make sure, and I just ask anyone who sends voicemails into the show, 
it hasn't happened yet, but it's just uh, until we figure out everything that's happening behind the scenes, it's important that nobody sends in a voice memo that has anything to do with the price of food. We want to divert attention away from the rising costs of food. So that's it. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's important to uh, yeah, blindly pay for your food. Mm -hmm. And yeah. just, you know, the government's nice. Like that's just, mm -hmm. this has nothing to do with them being uh, kind of uh, silent partners in this show, but uh, I just love the government, you know, yeah, like they're, exactly. they're fun, exciting. They're kind. Mm -hmm. They look out for the people and make good decisions every step. Mm -hmm. of yeah. And I, I listen to everything they say and I have no desire or need to question anything that they do or, or ask me to do. Why so. would we? And that's it. We can move on. Uh, but I will say we have meetings in Ottawa this week and you may see some slight changes with the show going forward, but we'll get there mm -hmm. next week. We may have some news for you, Aaron, for now, let's get to it. Let's fulfill our mandate. We must keep Canada weird by finding, learning a bit more about, and then discussing the weirdest news stories of the past week. And something odd happened. We had a bit of a, what's it called when the moon gets behind or in front of the sun? An eclipse. We have an eclipse of stories because we're going to be talking about how Easter is for the dogs. We're going to be talking about two dogs who carry on a long distance love relationship. We're going to be talking about something that can make dogs sick. We're going to have a really sad story about a dog. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to talk about a bar at a police station. So let it just be known. We didn't intend to talk about dogs all night tonight. The people of Canada saw to it that that was the most interesting news stories this week. We just go with the tides and the currents of the overall feel of Canada. You know, what's happening around the country dictates what we do on this show. You know, we follow the stories and the stories mm -hmm. were all on leashes, mm -hmm. um, which is a good thing that you should wear in terms of the government's, your relationship with the government. The government should keep you on a short leash because otherwise it's anarchy and, and we don't the, want that. In the, in the timeless words, of Snoop Doggy Dog. It's a doggy dog world. Mm hmm. That makes sense? No, but yeah. <laughs> Let's get into it here. Um, since we're recording this on Monday, the 10th of April, we're one day post Easter. Let's start with an Easter story. Ah, uh, yes. Well, let's let's get our eggs out and, and get cracking. This uh this story concerns an interesting fundraising campaign. Uh, that is, that's happening on Ontario, in Ontario that's using an egg hunt for dogs as a way to raise money for service dogs. Listen to this. 100 dogs celebrating Easter today with an egg hunt of their own at Knollwood Park in Kitchener. National Service Dogs hosting its 25th annual Easter egg hunt for dogs. Almost 5,000 eggs were filled with treats and scattered for the dogs to go and sniff out. This hunt was one of five happening right across the province. Oh, it's incredible, especially with COVID happening. Puppies didn't have that experience, so it's really important to get them out and socialized. It's a good cause, uh, and you know, the, the dog likes to see all the other dogs, and now that I got my son here, he loves to see all the dogs as well. All funds collected go to the organization helping to pair service dogs with post-traumatic stress disorder survivors and those on the autism spectrum. They've been able to raise $35,000 of the $40,000 goal. Fantastic to see the pups out today. Going to stop it there. We get the the gist of this. I, I Before you weigh in on if this mm -hmm. is an appropriate way to use dogs to raise money, um, the whole thing strikes me as dangerous. Dogs can't eat chocolate. So if it's chocolate eggs, then that's obviously a problem. Like I think chocolate is toxic to dogs. They weren't yes, clear in the they weren't clear in the news report if that was the case. But My assumption was that they were dog treats in the eggs or something. That was kind of what I was assuming. Like But let's say that's the case. You know, you get those little plastic egg things where you can like open them up and put something in and close them. Mm -hmm. I'm just thinking, would a dog not just like grab that thing and like choke on a chunk of plastic egg? I I'm I'm sure they thought about this, right? Yeah, I assume the people who organize this know enough about dogs to keep this event on the up and up 
I, I just wonder about the aliens looking down on us. <laughs> And what do they think of this? So uh-huh. when they're kind of uh, doing their probing and they're and they're abducting and and all of the various experiments they're doing as they're watching from afar and 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 slipping into our atmosphere every now and then to to you know get a sample and and, and have a look and a peek and and to see okay what do we think of the human race? And so then they look at this and they see. You know how we treat our pets, <laughs> as, and this is kind of maybe ties into the animal uprising stories that we cover. But they really we treat our pets like they're above us, right? You mm. know, like we 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 are serving them. We serve. So does the aliens are going to think that the dogs and the cats run the planet? And there's so much evidence of that. Even in this news report, there's the one man, He's he actually has his young son, it looks like, in his arms. And he says to the reporter and, to the, and looking towards the camera, he says, like, you know, it's just really great to get the dogs out here running around, seeing them have a good time. And, you know, I got my <laughs> son and I take him down, too. Yeah. But, but clearly <laughs> the dogs. Down. And I also, there was also the lady, uh, the dog owner who's participating in this he says like you know especially after the pandemic you know it's great to get the dogs you know out socializing and so mm-hmm. this report looks at like it seems to put dogs in front of people's children it also seems to put like dogs and their socializing as like a um uh, a topic to be considered in the effects of the covid pandemic and such yeah it's interesting but i do love the visual of a whole bunch of dogs with easter bunny ears on running around a field collecting eggs regardless of any of the supernatural uh, messages or whatever that this is sending yeah it's it's the outdoor activity equivalent to putting a sweater on your dog mm. So owners that dress their animals up. I mean, I love I love animals. I love dogs. I have a cat. I, I love him to death as if he is my equal and we live together. And hey, your roommate, right? Tiggs? Yeah, Ken Tiggs. Yeah. He's 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 my best friend, right? He really is. He truly is. And but but people who who dress their animals up, and I'm just gonna say this, and I'll take all the voicemails in the world over this that can that can come flooding in after I say yeah. this. But you know what? They should be humiliated. These these owners. Okay. Um, mm. They should feel humiliated when they dress their animals up. I think it's stupid. I think it's uh, you know, they're they're putting human emotions onto onto animals. You know, they're mm. they're. And, and and this this dog egg hunt is just humiliating. Like it's just <laughs> for everyone. If I was around, walking like, by, tools. like yeah, well, like what are you doing out there? Like it's it's just so dumb. Like you you take a treat bag into the outside and you know throw a few treats around for your dog and they'll go find them. Like this whole Easter egg hunt thing. Like mm, yeah. it's not really for the dogs. It's for these lonely dog owners that just wow. need to find more and more things. For there are dogs to do. I don't know. Bring the voicemails on. I don't care. You know okay. what? I'm just I'm coming out of blazing today. And this these people should be ashamed of themselves. There, I flat out said it. One thought though about dogs. I have several friends who are dog owners, and uh they talk about during the winter when there's like slush and ice and salt, like the road salt, it can get up in the dog's paws and be un- quite uncomfortable. Uh, yes, I, yes. I think maybe like if you're gonna put clothes on a dog. Should it not maybe just be like some kind of like cute little like booty things? I've boots? seen the dog boots. I've seen them. Are you okay with that? Yes, because I do agree about the salt and uh, that things like that uh, can be can be can be tough on on dog's feet for sure. Okay. Any any pet's feet. So I, if, I agree with that. My mother has a, a little like sweater with a hood thing she puts on her dog. It's a little weird, but whatever. But you know, there's a dog in my neighborhood, and of course, it's a. Um, not a poodle, but it like looks like a fancy poodle type dog of some sort, except it's this big, tall thing. But it doesn't wear, it wears like a little sweater, but it also wears big, heavy pants and boots. I see it all the time. And it's the most insane looking thing. But mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, we got to move on to another story about dogs. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We'll see. We'll see how this one goes. That last one with the Easter egg hunt was supposed to be a happy dog story. But I know. You I got just, a little upset. I just when I see it's just I find it so strange. Like to just see 
humans behave that way. I'm just the psychology behind it. I, I think it needs to be studied in more detail. And we need to find out why people are doing this. Like, I think treat animals as your equal for sure. But like, I would never take you, Jordan, to a park and get you to, to search for egg treats while I stood there and watched. And, <laughs> and I would never do that. You know, like I'd take you for a walk. You know, you and I go went for a walk yesterday. Yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. And it was so, windy. It was windy, so it was tough to stay outside. But yeah, just, just I don't know. It's just it, it's humiliating for the animals, and it's humiliating for the owners. Let's just let's just get that out there. Okay, let's move on to another dog story. This is more of a public service announcement, I think. This one's dark. Listen to this. Pets are part of the family, and if you have one, you may occasionally reward your dog or cat with a pet toy for exercise or fun. Now, many of these toys are safe to use. There are also some that can be potentially dangerous, especially if left alone with your pet. Pat Foran's here with a consumer alert. Pat. Thanks, Michelle. And Nathan, a pet owner from Midland says she bought her dog a rope toy for about $9, but she didn't know her pet was eating threads from the toy that created a blockage and led to a veterinary bill of more than $8,000. So how are you doing now, Dakota? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dakota, a nine-month-old German Shepherd, is feeling much better these days, but last month he almost died. Wendy Sunday says not long after she bought her dog a rope toy, he started acting strange. He was still playing, still running around, drinking lots of water, but he just couldn't keep his food down. As days went on, Dakota got worse. What followed was ultrasounds, x-rays, and eventually emergency surgery. Right away, she says he's ingested something. There's something in his stomach. She can feel it. Dakota had been chewing the robe toy and ingesting fibers from it. Without surgery, he may have died. I was panicking. He's a puppy. And if, if they hadn't have done that second ultrasound, I could have lost him. Dakota is now on the mend, but Sunday says she now has to pay veterinary bills totaling $8,100, all because of a $9 toy. I just, I want people to know, please. Don't buy this rope. Uh, sounds like a close call. $8,000 rope toy, basically, for her dog. Uh, some people may hear that story and be sh surprised at people paying, you know, cash for, like, surgery and stuff on animals and pets. Um, eight grand, I think, when you, like, you're talking about Ken Tiggs being your best friend and your roommate, you've probably spent some money on medical procedures for him. Would you spend eight grand on him? I would, yeah. Yeah, if, you know. If if I could if I could conjure the money up in any way possible, yeah, I absolutely would to keep him alive. Have you ever had to spend big money on anything? Um, he's had a few time. I don't know if we want to get into this uh, graphic detail on the show, especially on the Canadian government's dime. But yeah, um, he's had a few bowel movements that cost several hundred dollars a piece, oh. where he got backed up. Um. And had to be taken in to emergency, well, you know, to, to after hours okay. for an enema. Okay, that's I enough. Have, yeah, that happened twice. So each time it was $400 to help him just poop because he just couldn't. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Suffering because he would, it would become extremely painful for him and he'd be vomiting and like. Okay, you that's know. enough. Yeah, that's okay. Enough. <laughs> Sorry. I, I, I warned you ahead of time. <laughs> I should have listened. Uh, yeah. Th this story involves. A cheap rope looking toy and i've seen those toys all over the place it's just like a kind of like a heavy rope with a knot on each end that the mm -hmm. dog would would chew on her dog dakota i don't know what breed of dog it is but it looks like a big healthy dog the type that could handle a rope but i never thought of the idea of if the rope is you know not made of cotton and maybe there's some kind of polyester or something in there to make it even more durable to stand up with being played with by a dog as little pieces of that rope make its way through its system and can't be digested. You know, that's yeah. a big problem. And luckily for her, she noticed, you know, he wasn't keeping food down as she put it. And, uh, he seemed to be acting funny, but she was able to realize it was a problem and get him checked out and find out that that, you know, that, that blockage was there. Uh, have you, you know, with, when you're buying toys for pets, that could be like a, an issue too. Like a lot of people will go to Dollarama or like a dollar store and buy just this 
cheap crap that, you know, sickens your pets or, you know, in some cases kill them. I've seen stuff like that going around on Facebook. Like I mm -hmm. bought this little thing that my dog, you know, made my dog sick. It seems like she kind of has a story like that. Are you cautious with what you give your cat? I'm pretty cautious about it. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I buy him very expensive food because I find a lot of the grocery store food just to be garbage and you're just mm -hmm. feeding them things that you would never eat. So, I mean, he eats better than I do. So I believe it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, was that was a dig against me or no, no, I just, I believe know it as if like you're, you're, you're such a piece of garbage human yeah, being I, that you probably just eat garbage because you you can't even survive stupid yeah you probably don't even know what to eat um, yeah yeah, that's yeah what you don't know what the food guide is <laughs> uh let's move on to another one this story of the of dakota having his life saved there's some nice elements to it but it it brought me down this next story for dog lovers uh i, I think they're they're really going to enjoy this this involves a uh, a long distance relationship being uh, carried on between two dogs uh, who met when their when their owners moved into the same building in Alberta several years ago. Listen to this. This one uh, may tug at your heartstrings. Well, long distance relationships can be rough for both humans and dogs. Now, two dogs are getting attention from around the world after their owners found a way to keep them in touch. Amanda Anderson reports. Hi, I'm Sadie. And I'm Rolo. These dogs we're, we're brought together friends. during the pandemic when their owners moved into the same house in Edmonton. Kayla moved into one suite and I moved into the other. And that's how the dogs met. Sadie wasn't a fan of other dogs <laughs> until she met Rolo. Her owner, Kayla McTeer, says the connection was instant. This relationship um, became really important to all four of us really fast. For two years, the dogs were inseparable. You know, they would like go outside and play in the yard and then they'd come in and check in with us and get some water and go back outside and go downstairs and go upstairs. They were just kind of all, we, we just gave them free reign. <laughs> then came a job opportunity for Caitlin Banks that took her and Rolo to Calgary, about three hours away. McTeer and Banks started video chatting once a week, surprised the dog's connection was still so strong, even virtually. <laughs> I know, I know. It's pretty surprising for Sadie to howl like that because she doesn't really actually do that very often and she really only does that for Rolo. To like throw her head back and howl like that, it's not a common behavior for her. So Their friendship soon became known to the world thanks to a TikTok video that took off, eventually making its way onto CNN. We're just happy that people love our dogs as much as we do. Absence really does make the heart grow fonder. The dogs reunite about once a month, picking up right where they left off. And he doesn't have other dog friends in Calgary like Sadie. Like it's kind of a one of a kind situation. So um, it's been challenging, but I think that it makes our visits even more special when we do get to get the dogs together. Now, again, for people who only see the or, li or hear the audio of that news story, uh, the the two dogs at one point, like the owners have are living separately in separate homes or whatever. And they have um, th their two owners are connected through like Zoom or Skype or something of that nature. And the two dogs are just staring at each other, howling. And it's quite obvious that they're like, oh, it's my old friend. Oh, that warmed my yeah, heart. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to I'm going to pick this apart a bit. OK, here we go. Yeah. So I'm in that mood tonight. I don't know. Yeah, but, you didn't you didn't have enough coffee or maybe too much or you just didn't have a good sleep. No, no, it's just I don't know. You're we, a cat a, person. So you're I'm a cat person. Yeah. So I like dogs, too. I really do. Um. So when this dog sees the other dog, you know, in our human eyes, our human lens, we look at this and we're like, oh, he knows. Right. Like, he knows it's the other dog. He's howling. And I think he does. But. Is this doing more harm than good to the dog? Because is the dog actually howling? Like, uh, doesn't it confuse them? Like, they see their friend and they want to play with them and interact with them, but they can't. And, like, isn't that probably, like, an unnatural, uncomfortable emotional response that we're seeing mm. from the dog and not a happy, like, response? Like, oh, my buddy. Right. Like, oh, my buddy. Like, oh, my buddy. 
like what's going on like where are you like i want to play with you like i'm confused oh. <laughs> yeah so it's a hell of like confused terror it's a frustration yeah it's a yeah, frustrating okay. howl that's what i think it is we as humans when we connect with uh, a long distance lover or friend or whatever through zoom or skype we understand the technology behind mm -hmm. that and what's actually happening. A dog who doesn't understand what a laptop is or your iPad is and what the internet is and how it all works together. Yeah, that could be a little bit confusing. And I wonder absolutely, yeah. what of the course. psychological impact is. Yeah, and then when the, the dog doesn't understand what Skype or Zoom is or whatever, like it's... it's... Uh, here's the thing though. I just, I'm not trying to use what you say against you but in a lot of the stories that we discuss we do talk about how animals seem to be a lot more sentient a lot more understanding of what they're doing than we give them credit for do you think dogs are so dumb that maybe they're not a part of the i'm not saying they're dumb i'm just saying our technology is not it's not natural to them. It's not something they're going to use and understand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Understand, like it's they understand things that we don't understand because they're different species than us. Mm -hmm. So it's uh you yeah. know, like so I, I just think again we're we're projecting human emotions and human lifestyle uh situations onto animals and expecting them to react like humans do. So when the animal is making a noise. We're like, oh, he, yeah, he recognizes the other dog, but is that a good thing? Um, in the chat, Kristen uh, gave a bit of insight on if dogs are or aren't dumb. And what she says is that my mom's dog will hear me speaking to my mom on FaceTime and will immediately run to the front door. And then she remarks that dogs appear to be kind of dumb. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just, it's again, like, like our technology is not natural to them. So mm -hmm. they hear your voice and they assume you are in the room. You know, you are, are physically near them mm -hmm. because that's their world. Yeah. But like for us, we understand what Zoom is and, and what the internet is and, and what screens are. And mm -hmm. like, but it's just. I guess you're just a little worried about the psychological impact that this kind of communication mm -hmm. could have on a dog. Where I looked at it, a more surface level where I was happy to see the dogs appearing to interact through a human centric technology. What yeah. about when you see the moment where the, the two owners get together in person and have the dogs like smell each other and run in circles around each other in the living room? Did that make you feel good to see that happen? Yes. I liked that. Okay. We got uh, our last dog story before we move on to. Uh, There's another dog story. This one's a surprise. This one just popped up. Like, and I, I if you it. could have surprised me with any kind of a story, anything but another dog story would have been it. <laughs> like the surprise would have been, oh my god, we're talking about something that's not a dog. Oh, that's surprising. Or, have you ever had a dog? Because you're hard on dogs. Did one ever? Do, I'm not did... hard on dogs. No, I I always clarify that I love dogs. It's, yeah, I love it's them too. More, it's more at times dog owners that I get frustrated. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, humans in general, I guess. Um, I do. I plan to get a dog this summer. I'm just putting that out there now. I don't oh, know really? The name yeah. it. I don't know. The I'd breed. like to get a dog. Yeah, I'd like to get a dog at some point in time. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to while my cat is alive. Okay. So yeah, that's be a little much. Um, yeah, and he's older now, so he's been, you know, he's been alone for or an only cat for a very long time. So. <laughs> uh, Here's a sad dog story that just came out of nowhere this morning uh, and, and crossed and came across or upon my Keep Canada Weird desk. And I just wanted to share this one. This is what I would call a sad dog story taking place in Toronto. I don't know if it's as much of a sad dog story as it is a statement on the state of our economy or society. Listen to this one. The Toronto Humane Society is searching for the owner of an abandoned dog in hopes it can reunite them. Four-year-old Max was found at the Primrose Avenue Parkette on Davenport near Lansdowne. He was left with a note saying his owner could no longer afford to care for him. It also describes Max as very smart, good with kids, and a good boy. The Toronto Humane Society says the note tells them the owner cares and wants what's best for Max, and it's offering to enroll the dog and his owner into its urgent care program, which helps those going through difficult times. 
Dylan Dodson, Senior Manager for Social Work at the Toronto Humane Society, joined CP24 this afternoon to talk about their urgent care program. Toronto Humane Society strongly supports and believes in preserving the human-animal bond, and this is really the bond um, between humans and animals, um, and an effort to find alternative solutions to animals being forced to enter the, the shelter system. Uh, so if folks are moved by this cause, Max's story, and others, uh, please feel free to donate to TorontoHumaneSociety.com. Um, and if you do have an open space in your home, uh, we are always looking for foster parents. Um, our animals that are in the urgent care program are placed into loving and caring foster homes. Um, and so if you have a space in your home and in your heart uh, for families that are experiencing this, please do connect with us. Um, we're always looking for uh, altruistic families that, that can help our other, other community members. The Toronto Humane Society says since they took to social media regarding Max, they've received a strong lead that could potentially lead to him being reunited with his owner. I'm a more uh, emotional and empathetic person than you. That also <laughs> pulls at my heartstrings. That's, that's heartbreaking to me because when, yeah. when you hear that you know, the dog was ditched by its owner with a note that seems to state that the owner like cares and just and is ditching the dog because it thinks someone else could provide it in a better life. That's so sad to me. Yeah, it is sad. Um, it's unfortunate. It's it's a story that's probably, you know, common now, like especially with, mm -hmm. uh, oh, we're not going to actually, I'm not going to mention the cost of food actually, but Mm. or connect this story to inflation because that that, that doesn't exist but uh, as we know uh anyway uh yeah it's you know in all seriousness it's a it's a sad story yeah and it's and it's unfortunate that people are reduced to to these situations where they can no longer afford to care for their pets and have to try and resort to these measures to find it a better home yeah i feel horrible but it seems like they're the humane society is on their way to maybe reuniting but man that's going to be a complicated discussion if they do track down the owner and they're like listen i know you abandoned the dog with that note we can help you and like keep the dog until you get back on your feet and like it's mm -hmm. the right thing to do but man like that would be a complicated situation to find yourself in on yeah everyone yeah. in that discussion yeah i see it who knows about the owner? Like we don't, we know nothing about this owner. Mm -hmm. So they could be walking into God knows what really. Yeah. yeah who who knows, knows what kind of a situation they could try to re reconnect this dog with the owner and then regret that decision when they meet the owner. Mm. Yeah. Who knows? The positive part of this whole story is that maybe having this on the news and on this show will remind people that, if you run into trouble like this owner appears to be in before you do anything drastic reach out to the humane society the mm -hmm. spca wh whomever because there are so many people who love dogs and love pets uh that will look out for the dog and you and yeah things like this don't have to happen because this could have ended bad there's no like it ended up luckily in the humane society's care but that happy looking dog max could have found himself uh, mm -hmm. in a worse situation of course absolutely yeah now, we're going to end it with dogs officially right now. Wow, what a stretch. But let me say this. If that last story wasn't a statement on the current state of society and the balance of power in our country, this next story is really going to give you uh, a smack in the... Yeah, and I'd just like to remind you, Jordan, that the balance of power in this country is perfectly fine. Mm, that's right. <laughs> There's no overbearing... Uh, Big Brother, none of that. Yeah, no, the government has a very healthy, uh, wonderful relationship with yeah. its citizens, and and, yeah. and everything is going really good. I think anyway. Yeah. It's just that's my own personal opinion, and it's not connected anyway to our relationship with the Canadian government. Well, listen to this story. Before I play it, though, do you remember several months ago? We talked about a police force in Ontario who spent an insane amount of money to produce their own podcast. Oh, yes, I remember. I don't recall the dollar amount, but I remember it being like in the hundreds of thousands, hundreds of, of thousands of dollars yeah. for, for a podcast that nobody listened to. And I, if I remember correctly as well, they broke it down to being like for each play 
like each person who listened to even a portion of the episode, it cost them several dollars uh, mm -hmm. per person. Um, some more news has come out about that same police force. And yeah, it doesn't look good. It turns out that after the driving under the influence arrest of one of its officers, it came to the attention of the media that not only is that police force spending an incredible amount of money creating podcasts, they also have a licensed bar in the police station. So listen to this news report and we'll talk about uh, why that's a good idea. Toronto Police Superintendent Riaz Hussein once led disciplinary hearings. Today, he faced one, pleading guilty to misconduct. Last year, he crashed his unmarked police SUV and was criminally convicted for having a blood alcohol level over the legal limit. A CBC News investigation has revealed three hours before the crash, Hussein's pass card swiped into a private, licensed lounge at Toronto Police Headquarters. It's unclear what the officer did inside the room, but the fact that the bar exists is now raising questions. I'm absolutely astounded that they've got a bar in, in this government building. It's just another sign of police impunity. They, they think they can get away with anything. The former chair of the Toronto Police Services Board also has concerns. We need to discuss whether it is appropriate in this day and age, whether as an example to the community, the police should not rethink the propriety of having a bar. Neither Hussein nor his lawyer commented after today's hearing. But this injury lawyer says the police bar could leave the force open to liability. You always uh, look to make sure you include in, in the lawsuit any potential party who could be responsible. And you would likely sue the establishment uh, where the person was drinking. While Toronto police say the lounge complies with all regulations, the force is not talking about whether the bar should remain, and there was no mention of it at today's disciplinary hearing. At that hearing, Hussein was demoted from superintendent to inspector for one year. So when I introduced that story, I said it was a police officer. No, it was the superintendent of the police. <laughs> I don't know if I can talk about this without laughing. How obscene, how absurd is it that there would be a, a, a licensed bar mm -hmm. in a police station? It sounds like a joke, right? And especially all the steps that you would have to go through in order to get that bar into that building, you know, like yeah. to build a bar in a government building, you know, in, in a police you know, station or whatever of it all, is. Like, of all places. There would be so many people involved in that decision. And mm -hmm. then so many people involved enacting this decision to build this bar in this building. Like, at any point in time, did anybody with any common sense stop and yeah. say, are you sure we yeah. should be putting a bar in a police station? How would this look? To literally yeah, anyone. how's the general public going to feel about um, this? I, I could see this as being like, I don't know the history of this police station, uh, this bar at the police station, but I could see this being a thing that like in a bygone era, maybe it would be appropriate or, or mm -hmm. like normal or something like I could see like in the 30s or something and like a film noir detective kind of movie. There's this like back room where the police officers all like go after their shift to like you know, drink and talk about crime, I guess. But in this day and age, in 2023, that there's a licensed bar in the Toronto police station in, you know, in Canada, there's someone who works as a bartender, I'm assuming, in a police station. Yeah. It's, it's so insane. I like to think that the bartending position is always covered by a police officer. So, like, maybe... It's like, uh, okay, Johnson, you're on uh, crosswalk duty today. Um, you know, uh, McNeil, you're walking the beat. Uh, you know, you're working on this case. And and uh, McDonald, you're working the bar tonight. <laughs> Uh, um, this is you just make a mean mojito. It's like, I'm always working the bar. It's like, I never get to enjoy the bar myself. I'm always the bartender. It's like, yeah, it's that mojito, man. Yeah. It's so good. This situation though, with the superintendent who was demoted to inspectors, um, arrest and conviction or whatever for impaired driving. I wonder if that's going to get this thing shut down. And if so, man, he's not going to be a very popular guy on campus on in the station. No, no. But I But I mean my god, this they all knew that this can't last forever. Yeah, it's a uh... this bar like they all every time every night that they drink at it 
they must be like, enjoy every sip because there's no way this lasts forever. Mm, yeah. Um, now that CBC is on this, I'd say that's probably the end because what will happen, I can only assume is there, the next step is CBC or the media of some type is going to figure out how much money is being spent to maintain this bar because maybe they break even with alcohol sa sales who knows but if any like police money is gone towards funding this i think uh the the media is gonna have a field day with them oh absolutely absolutely uh, how long has this bar been there do we know no. We don't know anything. It seems like this is kind of a developing story, I think is how they would put it. Yeah. So how is if it's been there for a while, why has it taken this long? Well, yeah, that's a good question. But the it, it seems like the only way it, the only reason it was discovered is when a superintendent this... gets arrested and charged with impaired driving, that's a big deal. So they're digging into it. And in digging into it, they're fi they find out his activity and his activity includes like swiping into a licensed bar inside the police station. The, the reporter who yeah. stumbled upon that must have been like, what the f is this? Yeah. Yeah. I'm surprised it wouldn't have come out earlier just on the oddity of there being a bar in a police station. Ugh, what a, t what a world we live in the Toronto police force uh, with their podcasts and their nightclubs. I don't know about them anymore. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if they have live entertainment there. Imagine getting that gig. Yeah. Well, you did yeah, some yeah. interesting um like hosting and emceeing of like award shows. I remember when we lived together, you did a weird something really strange. Was it like an oil company had you introduce? Oh, there was like uh we had when I was doing with um with an improv group, we had done some corporate gigs like that. Yeah, that's the word corporate gigs. Yeah, yeah, corporate. And you would have to where we had done a poultry convention, <laughs> and you had to write jokes about like poultry. Um, no, we were improv, okay. so we had to you know make up jokes about poultry on the spot. <laughs> Weird. Yeah, it was. It didn't go well. No, I can't imagine it. I can't imagine it would. But no, no. Um. Anyway, these stories that we went through tonight, primarily canine related. Does this motivate you in any way to? Or does this make you see dogs any differently than you had in the past? No, I love dogs. Dogs are great. I've always loved dogs. I had dogs growing up. Um, and and down the road, I'll get another dog. None of these stories have affected my opinion on dogs, although it has cemented my opinion on a percentage of the dog owners out there. Not all the dog owners. I don't want to paint that brush. Mm. But yeah. what, what about policing? Does this change your opinion on policing in Canada? I think I want to become a police officer in Toronto. Yeah, I, yeah, like we are into podcasting. We can help them with that. We can drink at that and bar. I'll work. At the I'm bar. thirsty. Yeah. So and apparently they get. Let's paid. do it. Yeah, we gotta. Oh man, that'd be great. Like literally walking two seconds, having a glass of wine after your shift, or in the middle of your shift, and throw on the That's microphones it. and just start podcasting at karaoke. Yeah, <laughs> let's do karaoke on. Uh, you know. Well, I think we've been we've been around the block tonight. Um, between the dogs, the cops, the little messages at the beginning. I'll make it clear again mm -hmm. to everyone. I'm, I apologize for that. That's not something I intended to use this show as any way to offer communication back and forth. There is meetings that are going to happen throughout this week, and I think we'll probably have some mm -hmm. news next week because I'm not – I won't continue – offering this as a platform for anyone who wants to just share reminders about the taxes come on yeah yeah, um, yeah well let's wrap this up aaron let's wrap it up until next time jordan until next time um, uh, don't pet service dogs uh but pet nice dogs but check with their owner first like to make sure it doesn't bite that's a thing yeah, yeah, and I hid some Easter egg dog treats in your room, so after you <laughs> after you close up shop, you can go find them. I'm on it. I want to thank you for helping Aaron and I fulfill our mandate to keep Canada weird. But let us call out for even greater support in this mission. If something weird happens in your neck of the woods, make sure you let us know. We'd love to hear about it and talk about it in our upcoming episode. The best way to reach us is at nighttimepodcast.com slash contact. We hope to hear from you. Now, before we part here, let me end with some thanks. 
First, a big thanks to Aaron for sharing another weird evening with me and with you, the listeners of Nighttime. A big shout out to the internet's favorite cult leader, Unicole, who provides this series intro and outro voiceovers. And lastly, but most importantly, a massive thank you to every one of you listening to Nighttime, as without your interest and your support, this show would be as pointless as it would be impossible. Now, on the topic of support, let me thank the newest subscribers to the Nighttime Podcast Premium Feed. Bonnie, Allison, and Chandel, thank you for your generous support. If anyone else would like to support the show but can't do it by way of a premium feed subscription, you can give us a big hand by simply sharing this episode on social media and letting all your other weird friends know what we're doing here. If anyone listening has a story idea, wants to give feedback on the show, or contribute any kind of message to be aired and responded to in an upcoming episode, we welcome you to do that at nighttimepodcast.com. We hope to hear from you. But until then, take care of each other, hug your loved ones tight, let us know if you see anything weird. The Nighttime Podcast is written, hosted, and produced by Jordan Bonaparte. Copyright Jordan Bonaparte.